Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your here. We thank you for you draw us close to your heart. Lord, magnify yourself this day. Less of me, more of you. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Please take your seats. Son trakushi trande shikando sata. The Lord has showed me an image of a cloth, like a towel. Warm, like a warm towel. Somebody must have pain. Somebody must have pain, not necessarily in their body, but possibly in their heart. If I ask, I know you will not put up your hand. Somebody has a broken heart. Somebody is in pain. Somebody is sad. If you're brave, put up your hand. Of course, I can identify you. But if you're brave, put up your hand and uh, we, we deal with it that way. Maybe I let it go. Maybe the pain will go along the way. Okay. At least we have one brave person. We have one brave person. But you're not even the one God has showed me. Okay, you're around here. <laughs> it is, that's the easiest way to put it. But the Lord God, by the time he shows it to me, then he's willing to do something about it. I believe along the way it shall be well. Praise God. Sebo, I've not ignored you. We are going to handle. Amen? We shall handle. Is it your first time here? And the person you've come with also the first time? <laughs> I'm trying to, to balance the equation. No, 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 no. I'm not going to. It's his first time. We will make him run away. Okay, because your first time, my name is Bob. I'm your pastor for the day. That is where I will end for now. But uh, along the way, we shall share. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Okay, I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to get right into it. But the Lord is insisting, around this area, let healing be in your heart, in the name of Jesus. I, I know you don't want to be identified, but the Lord is on your case. You even prayed, you even cried to God last night, the other day, and it has been about three, four days of pain, right? Yeah, God is aware. You now already know I'm talking to you. Praise the living God. Today, I've titled the message, call it Lost Understanding or a Lost Presence. L-O-S-T. Lost Understanding or Lost Presence. If you lose the presence, you've lost the understanding. And if you have the, the wrong understanding, then you'll have a strange presence. Praise the living God. Earlier on during intercession, it was shared from John 8, 43, uh, that why, why do you not understand my speech even because you cannot hear my words? Praise the living God. Why do you not understand my speech even because you cannot hear my words? And uh, we have emphasized day in, day out that uh, the word of God, the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. But today, we're possibly going to push it a notch higher and get to understand something a little better. Praise God. Praise the living God. What I can tell you about presence, we all know, we all know the story of Adam. Adam was made by God and he made a special place for him, the Garden of Eden, right? And the Lord walked with him in the cool of the day, he walked with him always. He was, he was used to the presence of God. He walked with him. God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. And today, does God really walk with us? And uh, Adam in that point or at that time was not conscious of evil because there did not exist anything called evil. 
until a new voice was introduced, a new fellowship, is when, not, that is not even when he lost the presence, but they became conscious of something else. And then they were pushed out of the presence of God, the Garden of Eden. And then all hell broke loose. Praise the living God. All hell broke loose. They no longer could walk with God. And after that time, you notice that uh, God never really walked with people. Occasionally, we start to hear voices, right? Occasionally, we start to hear God. We start today. But the way Adam walked with God is not the same way we do it today. Praise God. How I wish, if it is possible to wish, that never happened. That would continually be in that presence. Praise the living God. I'm going to share a couple of things that may mess us up, but they'll bring us greater understanding. If you're away from the presence of God, then you're in the presence of another presence. If you're away from the presence of God, like God cast him away and locked him out. Why did God let him go? Not because he had sinned. Not because the devil had corrupted them. But because sin nature was established in them. And they could have gone for the, fruit, the, the, the tree of life. And that tree of life gave them etern would have given them eternity. And forever they would have remained sin they would be identified with sin if that is the word to use altogether today the bible says the christian cannot sin we shared about sin right a christian cannot sin that one usually we have to stop there and digest can you commit sin yes but in the sight of God, you're not a sinner. Why? God is not worried about sin anymore. He already dealt with sin by the blood. So, if you remain in his presence, you never have to worry about sin. But if you walk out of his presence, you have to work out your salvation with real fear and real trembling. I don't know if I'm clear. Those who had the teaching on sin, this is clear for you. The only time you should worry about sin is when you walk out of his presence. Thereby, sin consciousness will prevail. And once you're conscious of sin, that thing that you think is the thing that will come to you. We are together. But the reality of things is you're not supposed to be worried about sin. Only you find Jesus. Not the scriptures. Imagine you're a thief and you start quoting scriptures. The Bible says, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt... Will the scriptures save you? No. Your atmosphere must change. Your atmosphere must change. Adam was a perfect man. Each of us was made perfect. But then corruption came. How did it come? We walked away from that presence of God. And therein is where I'm talking about lost interpretation or lost presence. I'm going to give you a very good example from the Bible. Uh, I'll use scripture to make us understand that the same God who is with you now is the same God that can damage you the next second, depending on your atmosphere. He's a God of principle. We'll read Exodus chapter 3, verse 3. Exodus chapter 3, verse 3. How many people are here for the first time apart from him? I'm seeing faces that look very new. We, we know all the new people. And uh, those who are new, the Lord bless you. We are going to speak to you. I already spoke to you, right? Madam with the baby, I already spoke to you. Not yet. We are going to find out if I spoke to you. <laughs> and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. Verse 4, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, and he said, here I am. Five, and he said, draw not near here. Put off your shoes from off your feet, for the place whereon you stand is 
holy ground. So that atmosphere is an atmosphere of holiness. Now together, it's an atmosphere of holiness that Moses' nature cannot enter that place. Remember, Moses was raised as a prince in a different atmosphere. So that was corruption, and he ran away from it to be trained. Now together, and here... Here it is, he removed his shoes. Maybe the interpretation of shoes mean ministry or whatever it is that you move on mean ministry. Maybe it comes from here. So God had to remove him from a certain atmosphere into a new atmosphere. The day you got born again, it, you felt, when, when the word maybe was being ministered to you, you felt things in your heart. You felt convictions. You felt joy, peace. You felt this is new, this is beautiful, this is sweet, Right? That is a form of deliverance where you're moving away from your old state into a new state, but your soul has not yet been renewed. That's why after getting born again, it was very sweet in the beginning. Then along the way, you start staggering and stumbling and falling and you're like, God, sin consciousness, I have failed you. You cannot fail God. You failed yourself. Altogether, God is not worried about failure. The Bible says he knows who, who stands and he knows who falls. I mean, he can pick him up at any, at any time. This is what I'm talking about, lost understanding. Praise the living God. Now, Moses has this mentality of the Egyptians. And remember, Egyptians were idol worshippers. But now he's presenting to him a bush that can speak, a bush that cannot burn out. And he's saying, remove your old nature, remove your old walk and come into my walk. Praise God. Now, Moses is not conscious about the, the practices of this, this new people, the people of God. And therein, we will, I'll give you Exodus chapter 4, verse 4, verse 24. Remember, God is a God of covenant, right? He's a God of principle. So here, Moses, the same Moses who has just been with God, who is now walking in a holy presence, has walked away from the holy presence, right? We all know what happened with him. He had a staff, he became a snake, he picked it up. God demonstrated a couple of things. And that was nice. Like us, when we receive salvation, we start seeing miracles, start seeing wonders, and it is beautiful. Now here it comes. And it came to pass, by the way, in the inn, that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. I don't have to add on to that. Now, what is wrong with God? That you have just met this man, you're showing him things that he has not known. Now you want to kill him in the next chapter. Why does God want to kill him? Moses had a wife. He had children who are not circumcised. And therein he had broken the law. And God, in the Old Testament, you break the law now, you die now. Altogether. So it is simply telling you that you're not special. Outside God. Outside God's presence. You're just an ordinary man. And if you, today we are blessed that we have grace, we have Christ. We are blessed. Otherwise, none of us would be alive. If you think you're perfect, then it is okay with you. The same God who is calling this man to be a redeemer, remember he was born for this purpose. He was floated on water, indicative of how he's going to do a great baptism or a great deliverance through water. But now the same God wants to kill him. Simply means God can replace you anytime. But because of Jesus today, you're irreplaceable. Altogether. So if you've never loved Jesus, please love him. If you've never understood him, seek to find him. He that sees the Son sees the Father. You, therein will you know the heart of God. The Bible is nice, but the Bible is scary. The Bible is scary. If you understand, with more knowledge, more wisdom comes. Grief comes. Pain comes. You name it. I usually use this example. How many of you have taken an HIV test? The idea of going to take it, you panic. When they draw your blood, you're like, oh, I finished. When they tell you, come back two weeks from now, you will lose weight. Now together, 
I was going to tell you a story, but let me focus on the word. You will lose weight. It happened to me. Those ladies who cancel, usually the ladies, they asked me a question. Have you been in a situation where you could have got, gotten this thing? My friend, you remember Jesus? You remember, you pray any prayer, you start sweating, you start... Then the lady says, no, it is well. Even when you know you're innocent, you will get malaria without the, without the parasite. Praise the living God. Praise God. The atmosphere, the, your mind, it matters what your mind has. It matters which atmosphere you're in. I've always said, especially the ministers that uh, come and we pray. I've said this for many years. Come and we pray together because I have grace to create an atmosphere. Today we prayed here and they did not respond to me, but I believed God ministered to me that everybody at least saw a vision. And God is revealing himself to you, not to me. I don't know what he has showed you, but he's using me to be the one that brings that presence. And we're saying today, sometimes you can pray for 10 years and there's no presence. You may feel goosebumps here and there. You'll feel holy, you become religious, right? But at least for me, I pray every Wednesday. I go to church every Wednesday. Uh, I tithe. Remember the Pharisees? You, you become better than others because you're, you're unconscious that there's no atmosphere. You become religious. Praise the living God. We all know the scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. The Bible says that, uh, uh, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners or good character. Bad company corrupts good character. But the word, of, the word communications is evil fellowships. And fellowships is atmosphere. All together. And today, many Christians are moving from church to church to church to church looking up for man of God after man of God after man of God after man of God. And uh, there are different atmospheres in different churches. Does not the Bible say that the false prophets shall come and they shall do signs and wonders? It does not say they shall deliver. It says they'll do signs and they'll do wonders. If you have a man of God who has, if you've never seen cast out a devil, be careful. I'm speaking from the Bible. Even you with your salvation, if you've not cast out a devil, look for them. All together. Otherwise, you could just be another false something carrying signs and wonders. Except, except you, you cannot rob a man's house except you first bind him, right? There are spirits that maybe I'm overshooting. That those you bind, that those you cast out. The ones you cast out live in you. The ones you bind come from outside. We're going to get there. We're examining the Bible. We say it lost, lost understanding, right? We're trying to understand certain things today. You remember the disciples when they walked with Jesus? They cast out devils and they came rushing to Jesus. We, 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 we cast out devils who are this, we are that. Even the devils were subject to us. Was the Holy Spirit around? The Holy Spirit only came after Jesus had gone to heaven, right? So they could cast out devils, even without the Holy Ghost. But how? They were in the presence of Jesus. Now together. So do not be shocked when you find a man who can prophesy and he has no Holy Ghost. He has a spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise the living God. Are we getting somewhere already? In TMS, people are usually quiet. You don't know if you're talking to yourself or talking to them. But usually, the Bible, well, the Bible says that did not our hearts burn when he yet spoke, when he spoke. So let me hope your heart is burning. Amen? But when I say praise God, traditionally, we don't need the class. You say amen. <laughs> amen? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, here it is today. Job 29.4. I'm revealing to you things, which we have shared most of these things, but there's no wrong in repetition. The Bible says, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret 
of God was upon my tabernacle. A tabernacle was a tent, but in this case, we're talking about the body. The secrets of God were with Job. At this point, there was no Bible. We're trying to have, to rekindle, or to retrieve, to retrieve lost understanding. At this point, Job did not have a Bible. But the understanding of God was within him. The secrets of God were within him. Today at least we know that the Lord God will do nothing except he reveals his secrets first to his servants, the prophets. That's Amos 3.7. Today, the same Bible said, yes, search the scriptures, thinking that you'll find him, right? You notice I've always told you, read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible. But the Bible is simply a guide. It's a pathway to finding Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So you can read the Bible and fail to find Jesus. How many of you sleep with Bibles on your bed? Please put up your hand. You feel safe, right? Jacob slept on a rock, and he saw God. He saw angels going up and down, right? And he's like, oh my God, I did not know that God, the presence of God, the, the God was here, right? Now for you, with your sleeping in your Bible, how many dreams or nightmares do you have? I'm not saying stop sleeping with your Bible. It used to work for me as a kid. I've shared that with you, right? When I was a kid, every time I'd sleep with the Bible, I'd not have nightmares, I'd not have bad dreams and torments from strange places. But today, I don't, I am in the Bible. I don't have to sleep with the Bible. What are we saying? We're trying to remove contradictions of lost understanding. You can have 10 Bibles and have no God. But if it's your ritual to sleep with your Bible, don't stop. Anything down outside of faith is a sin. So if you stop sleeping with your Bible because I talked about it, you're now sinning against yourself, not against God. So if you have faith in that book, keep staying with that book. But God will not ask you how many times you slept with that Bible. He'll ask you, did you get the atmosphere of the book? Remember the prophets? Ezekiel and uh, Apostle John the Revelator? They were given the book. Eat the book, eat the book, eat the book, eat the book. So if you don't eat that book, not literal eating, then uh, the devil can still whip you when your Bible is there. What am I saying? Most Christians have Bibles they don't read. But I don't have to repeat myself, right? But by show of hands, how many have read the whole Bible? <laughs> the movie has begun. <laughs> We're together. How many have read the whole Bible? Please put up your hand. Don't fear. God is on your side. We are making an assumption that only two people I know there are more than two because I'm the third. But if you've read it up to the end, is that the end? Read again. And again and again. Never stop. You'll always find something new. The secrets of God will come to you. I'm letting you know that just because you've read the Bible does not mean you have the presence of God. Amen? Praise the living God. There's a scripture I want to skip, but I don't know if I should. One thing, one way of attracting a presence is if you find somebody who knows something better than you, who you identify that knows something that you don't know, the word is understudy, right, in English. But in, in salvation, it is submit. Submit and acquire that knowledge. And it's not going to be by studying what they study. It's by impartation. How many of you prophesy now? How many of you do healing now? Okay, my little one is there. She does, she can heal. Do you think she understands what she does? No. It's just like the disciples who are with Jesus, because of that presence, she's able to do this, but she has no understanding. She still has to grow into it also. She has to be taught. Praise God. But some people, the moment they get small dose of anointing, they become a celeb. Do you know me? Do you know we live on the mountain? Praise the living God. There's a scripture I'm trying to find, which I'm trying to dodge.
we shall see. Praise the living God. Give me Matthew 11. No, do I say Matthew 11? Okay, the story is about John the Baptist. This is John the Baptist. He's the one who made the way, right? That was his assignment. Jesus identified that he's the greatest prophet born of a woman. And then now, after his atmosphere has changed from liberty to incarceration, he's in prison. He starts questioning God. He starts questioning his own work that this Jesus, I mean, are you the Messiah or do I wait? Should we wait for another? All together. Today, we are in church, right? The moment you leave church, is the presence still with you? Or have you left it behind? And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end to commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and preach in their cities. Verse 2. Now when John had, when John had in prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples, three, and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? In another verse, it, another, in, in, uh, in Luke chapter 7 from verse 18, it will show you that he was offended against Christ. He was offended and Jesus said, I mean, blessed is the man who is not offended against me. And then he tells these people that who do you go to see? Do you go to see reeds blown by the wind or do you go to see and he said, I mean, you go to see the prophet or something and he says that one greater than the prophet has come. But today, when your prophet tells you something, you don't, do you ever think that there's one greater than the prophet? We're talking about lost understanding. Like for me, my papa, my papa, he has even just come out from fasting. He's better than the rest, right? And God is telling you that there's one better than your papa. Stop worshipping your papa. Here we are. we're seeking a place of offense. Offense simply means that he took a different atmosphere. The word is to scandalize. But the better word for the word offense from the Bible, from the Greek interpretation is to entrap. We talked about entrapment, right? It's like setting yourself up to fail. If you take offense against Christ, you're setting yourself up to fail. This is what John the Baptist did. And yet he was the greatest prophet among all prophets ever born of a woman. And the Bible continues to say that in heaven, John the Baptist is the least. Why? Because he offended. He took offense against Christ. And this was Jesus, Jesus' brother, his cousin. So today, atmosphere matters. Keep an atmosphere where there is no offense. Yes, I've prayed for this thing. I've done this. I've tithed. I've been to church. I had there was a, a video I saw where a, a, a son in the church was challenging his spiritual father. That, but this waiting till when? You, every Sunday you tell us, wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord. Until when I have waited, I've applied for jobs, I've done this and things have jumped, but you're still telling me to wait. He was right. But he was wrong in the way he addressed it. All together. And these things happen to us, right? We tell you, wait, 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 wait. Wait and wait and wait and wait. And you wait and wait and wait. And you're like, you know what, let me try another church. You reach there, the atmosphere is also different. You have to start from the beginning. Then you say, you know what, let me do this thing at home. Then after maybe one, two years, you say, I remember there was a church, let me first go back and check on Uncle B. You come and find Uncle B has moved a different journey and we just greet you, smile at you and go home. And yet you prayed that previous week that let me go, Papa, let my Papa locate me, I'm not your Papa. Out together, find Jesus. It's shocking that today the choir sang things about only Jesus. I'm like, these guys, are they with the Holy Spirit or <laughs> with Jesus? Did they plan their thing? Out together, 
Praise God. Praise God. So, there's a story of Joseph in Matthew. I'm not going to read Matthew 2, 21 and 22 where an angel appears to Joseph and tells him, take the kid away from here, for there's, the other king is dead, Herod is dead, there's going to be an, there's another king who he feared, and the angel is giving you instructions, but you're fearing, so he took another direction and went to, he went to Nazareth. And uh, the Bible says the reason for all that was so that it may be fulfilled what the prophets said. Now, if you look at that scripture plainly, be like, but the angel is speaking to me. He has told me the king is dead. The one who chose to fear was Joseph. And why he went to Nazareth is because it's so that the scripture may be fulfilled. So what is the purpose of that scripture? If some of you, if you met an angel once and he tells you the king is dead, you'd possibly rejoice and enter the city, right? But this man had Joseph is one of the people in the Bible who are called fathers. And yet there is no book of Joseph. He's one of the mature Christians. He defended Christ. He took him so that the scriptures may be fulfilled. I thought today, you people who search the scriptures, you search the scriptures thinking that is your answer, right? But the scriptures also yet have another portion to, of fulfillment. So after you've known the Bible, now what? After you've known that God has written this thing, now what? And that is where your frustration comes in and then offense comes in and then you walk away from God. Entrapment. So one of the things in the, if the scriptures are not fulfilled in your life, then you still have a long journey. That's why I say, you can quote me up to Revelation. But if there's no fulfillment, then we have a problem. Amen. We have demonstrated this before. I'll get there. Let me not, let me not rush. We have heard of doctrines of demons. I'm going to read the scripture. Let's read Timothy, 1 Timothy 4, 1 to 5. Praise God. Is everybody healthy? I'm just asking. Is anybody sick? Is anybody unwell? Especially the new ones. Is anybody in pain? Praise God. Now the end, 1 Timothy 4, 4, 1 Timothy 4, 1 to 5. It says, now the Spirit speaks, speaketh expressly, yes, that in a latter time, sons shall depart from the faith. Some, rather. In the latter time, some shall depart from the faith. Departing from the faith is not that you have lost faith. You've just walked into a different atmosphere, a different kind of faith. Because right now, to sit on your chair, it is still faith. But here, we're talking about the faith of God. You depart from the faith, but you will, like just like Moses, he moved away from Egypt, met God, and he had to learn a new thing to stay safe in the presence of God. Altogether. So departing from the faith is not that you have left Jesus. Usually it simply means you're adding works to the faith. That is departing from the faith. Altogether. You've heard of religion. Religion, these guys have departed from the faith because they have added works to it. You now have to do things manually. You departed from the, from the faith giving ear, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Seducing spirits. Something that seduces you is not inside you, right? Altogether. Something that attracts you, entices you, is not inside of you. It is outside. You remember the, the fallen angels? The fallen angels? Those ones, you cannot cast them out. They don't possess a body. They don't possess your body. They are not disembodied beings. They have angelic, angelic bodies, but they can mess you up. These are the seducing spirits. The ones that taught men doctrines, those who have read extra biblical books, you're going to, you will understand what I'm talking about here. And then the doctrines of devils. So they taught you certain things this, that were doctrines of devils. What is a doctrine? 
something that manipulates your mind or changes your mind. You've had the word indoctrination. Like right now, what we're doing is indoctrinating you, but with the word of God, fortunately. But I can say, when I snap a finger, miracles happen. And then you take it as a doctrine and go everywhere snapping fingers. Now together, you've heard of people complaining that these pastors, they are selling water. Now people believe in water. That is a doctrine. But there's nothing wrong with giving somebody water. That is anointed. I can speak into it, it's anointed. And it will heal you. And you can use it continually, but you don't worship the water. You worship the source of the water, which is God, not man. That is clear, right? Praise God. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. About speaking lies, uh, remember Judas? Judas was a man who served God. He worked with Christ, right? But how come if he, he sold him? Okay. Judas is very obvious. Okay, Peter. Peter said, where you go, I'll go. I'll, I will die for you. I'll kill for you. I'll do everything for you. Did he not deny him? So what seduced him? But later on, you found that he was restored by the Spirit of God, the presence of God, that upon this rock, flesh and blood has not told it to you. And yet, he's the only one who had it. Those who are prophetic, you notice that God speaks to you, you hear things, but your next neighbor is not hearing. So God speaks to you direct. That is an atmosphere. And that is a doctrine. I'm going to share with you a scripture that will help us to understand what I mean by doctrine. Speaking lies, hypocrisy. Even Moses. Praise the living God. Am I making sense? You can walk with Christ and yet you're walking in the doctrine of devils. You can call his name every day. You can recite a rosary. You remember Balaam? The Bible says that the doctrine of Balaam, the one who sells, he's for hire. He's, he was a wizard and God turned him into a prophet, but he was for hire. He was hired to curse the Israelites. Today, some of you try to indoctrinate, try to, Papa, Papa, this person, this person, send the fire. You're trying to turn me into a wizard. All together. But if you call me and tell me about a thing and I do it myself, it is not you. It has nothing to do with you. My job is to defend you. But it's not I defending you, it's the Christ defending you through my being. Because he has given me a gift to do so. But avoid calling me to tell me that send fire. The woman is a witch. The what, the this, the that. Because I get emotional, because I know you, because I care for you, love you, we have worked together for a while, I will also just release fire. Then somebody suffers and God says, I mean, would, couldn't you have just saved this all? Remember the apostles or disciples, they said they met people in a, another village. They rejected them. And then they came back to Jesus and said, let's send fire. And Jesus said, I never came to kill, I came to save. So these people have a different doctrine, a different atmosphere, and yet they're with Jesus himself. Praise the living God. Conscience. A conscience has to do with atmosphere. Or your fellowshipping. Then forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving, of them which believe and know the truth. So people who do not, who walk away from this doctrine of God, they create rules. I told you they bring works. And many of us, when we got saved, we were both saved and yet not saved. You're born again, but you still believe in the works, that you have to work out this thing as you. You have to add this. There's no amount of discipline you can present to God that will impress him. The Bible simply says, be a holy. Be a holy is not that go and become holy. No. Like he said, light be. And it was. Be a holy. You're holy. You're only holy if God has declared you holy. Okay, if you're a sinner, the Bible says, your sins I can forgive. I say, ah, it is well with you. And you feel, Papa, after you said it's well, I really felt it is well. 
But now the doctrine of it is they have created a booth in a particular church building called a place for repentance. You go and kneel down and talk to a human being. So the principle is supposed to be the same. The practice, one is evil, one is not. But we're all using the name of Jesus. Are we making, are we clear? Praise God. And do you know, your righteousness is filthy rags in the sight of God. So no matter how good you have done without Jesus, it's a waste of time. Men will praise you, they will applaud you. But God is saying, I mean, I don't know you. Praise the living God. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Here we're talking about everything. This is particularly in, in food, foods and all that, but anything about you is good as long as you magnify God in it. The same thing that is good is also bad. But if you present it to God, he sanctifies. Amen? Verse 5. For it is sanctified by the... Oh, okay, it's written. By the word of God and prayer. Prayer in itself. Prayer in itself is useless. If it is outside the atmosphere of God. How many have, have prayed this prayer? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. I've said that many times, right? How many have said that? Maybe you're getting into an accident. Maybe something has threatened you. 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 How many times do you have to call Jesus? Praise the living God. Have we understood each other? You can call Jesus one million times and he's not there. If a man could sell Jesus, if a man could deny Jesus while looking at him like this, at least Peter was there. We saw that he was asked. He was even told that, but you're denying him, but the, even, the, even your own speech betrays you because you've been in that atmosphere. So you speak like him. We can identify him in you. Jesus can be identified in you, but you're denying him. Where were the rest of the disciples? Who is worse, Peter or the ones you don't know about? Praise the living God. Prayer outside the atmosphere of God is a waste of time. These prayers you pray because you're sad, because you're broken, because someone betrayed you, someone hurt you, someone offended you. Don't pray. Wait until you have gladness of heart. Then you speak to your father. Does that make sense? Always rejoice in the presence. In the presence of God is, is the fullness of joy. And pleasures forevermore. Now you bring your heavy heart. Rather, a contrite heart, a broken spirit, is a broken, a contrite spirit, a broken heart, you will not cast away. My friend, you will be cast away. This thing called doctrine is not taken away by reading scriptures. Like you're Christian, you've been indoctrinated from your childhood, and then you read the Bible and read the Bible and think it will go. No, you simply must change atmosphere. You must change atmosphere. Praise God. And then doctrine keeps you in one place. It keeps you cannot progress. Have you tried to minister to a religious person? You know, religion is not is not spiritual. It's not a spirit that brings it. It is human beings that created it. Religion is more like a system. You are not going to pray system away. You simply have to change atmosphere or change the system. Praise the living God. People who are not making progress. You go to church, they pray for you, for you no demon is living. Because it was never a demon, it was simply religion. I had an encounter, I shared it actually last Sunday, last Sunday. Saturday I had an encounter with a religious person. They, they're the ones who called for me to minister to them. Then I see a rosary. I didn't attack. I simply said, you sure you want me to talk to you? Like, yes. Like God can speak to you, but you, you, you're a religious person and this like, then she. I'm like, yes. I told her, let's stop there. Let me do other things. Because that one is not for out. Have you ever been so confident 
that other people, demons are cast out. You, there is nothing living. But they, after it has been cast out for them, they make progress. And for you, you're not. Religion. Oh, we call it doctrine. Praise God. Now, this is what doctrine is. Deuteronomy 32, verse 2. We have shared something similar to this when we talked about unboxing God. Unboxing God. Those who are there, I don't think you can remember, but the teachings will be availed to you soon. Deuteronomy 32.2. Did I say 2? Yes. This is what the Bible says. This is God speaking. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, as the showers upon the grass. So the doctrine of God is not scripture. The doctrine of God is only found in his atmosphere. All together, I know what I'm saying may sound a bit controversial. The doctrine of God is not scripture because even Satan quoted scripture. There is no way Satan was ministering the doctrine of God. The doctrine of God comes to you. It's called an illumination. You just have a sudden understanding. You have a sudden knowledge. You have a sudden wisdom. Even your prayer is useless if it's outside the atmosphere of God. You'd be the other Moses who God tried to kill after they have just met and agreed that you are going to be the deliverer. The doctrine of God, it comes like rain. It comes like dew is there every morning, whether in a desert or not. There is dew. Praise the living God. So God's doctrine is as such. It comes to you. That's why you can stand next to somebody and one is religious and one is not. Praise the living God. Give me verse 3. This is God himself. But I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye, great, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. God himself will bring his doctrine to you. Give me verse 4. He is the rock. He is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Verse 5. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. How is this possible? If you walk away from God's presence, then by default you're corrupted. You remember the sons of Korah? Korah and the priests, they rebelled against Moses, who was God's chosen messenger. And Moses simply said, come tomorrow, let us meet in this place and let God come and judge. When God came, he opened the ground, swallowed them, buried them. And yet they were also priests. I'm telling you that you, you're not safe in your salvation if you're outside, if you have a certain spot, if you're outside God. Doctrine is not the scriptures. Why? For example, even certain quoted scriptures. Doctrine comes to you. It's an atmosphere. Like Adam was in Eden. He was in a particular atmosphere. When he was removed from that atmosphere, all hell broke loose. So, people like me are not excited when you can quote me scriptures, but I'm encouraged when you at least dare to quote scriptures. You're better than someone who has dreams and revelations. That I died, I went to heaven, I came back, God has sent me to you. My friend, there's only Jesus. All together, people have made the doctrine of dreams and visions. It's, it's not wrong to have them, I have them. But I've always told you, there are two people I know. I always use that example. Joseph had the same dream twice and became the richest man in the world. Solomon had the same dream twice and became the wisest man in the world. For you who has them every day, you died and went to heaven. 
What did you bring for us? Praise the living God. We're saying, what was our title again? Lost understanding. Many have lost understanding because of strange doctrine. And doctrine is not necessarily outside the Bible. Like a fake dollar. It is still a dollar, right? But it's fake. Like false doctrine is, is the Bible, but lost understanding. And I've told you one way to trace a fake prophet. Yes, they'll prophesy, but if they can't cast out a devil, then you know that. Mm -mm. But don't make that also a doctrine. You'll come here, Uncle B, but when did we last see you casting out a devil? You'll be like, ha, did I teach you the wrong things? <laughs> But you go and get the devil and you come. Then we shall tell, we shall show you. Praise God. They have corrupted themselves. Okay, give me verse 6. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he your father that has bought that has bought you? Has he not made has he not made you? And established you. So once God has established you, just accept that. Once God has chosen you, accept it. Don't try to beautify. Don't try to add glory. If God wants to grant you a, a special glory, he will. He did it with Paul, right? When Paul met, that's in Acts 19, if I remember correctly. They were arguing about the word and they went to, it was a school where Paul used to go and teach like for two years. They argued and argued till Paul Till God decided to perform special miracles by Paul. And there was no other answer. No matter how much information you have, you can't argue with what we call a special miracle. So the presence, the doctrine of God is his spirit, his presence. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. The doctrine of God is his spirit and his spirit cannot be measured. Praise God. Praise the living God. Hope we are together. Give me John 16, 13. I've picked scriptures that, are, that sound controversial, but it is for knowledge. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truths. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truths. So, what the Bible is simply telling you that you can have the spirit of truth and not have the truth. Because the spirit of truth is going to guide you into truth. Praise God. These things are a bit scary. So you can be very confident in God and yet you're totally away from him. But he's saying, even the Holy Spirit doesn't tell you what he, of himself. He tells you of God. Even Jesus is a signpost to God. The scriptures are a signpost to Jesus. We're going to read the scripture. Are we together? We're talking about lost understanding. So never make the assumption that because you can speak in tongues, ba 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 ba, that you 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 the one that you have arrived. Never make the assumption. Remain in that presence, and the Spirit will guide you in all truth. Fortunately, He is going to guide us. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. We have not heard of the scripture. We'll find it along the way. Where the Bible says, uh, you search, I've said it already, you search the scriptures thinking you can, you'll find me in them, right? This is Jesus talking. They are searching the scriptures thinking you'll find me. No. The scriptures simply guide you to him. And when you find him, he's simply the way. But guess what? He is the truth. The spirit will guide you to the truth. And he is the life. When you, he that has him has life. He came that you may have life more abundantly. We're talking about doctrine. 
Praise God. And then we, we know about the mind of Christ. I've shared this. I shared this in the morning with, with the ministers. The Bible says you, you have the mind of Christ. Which mind is that? Is it mind or the mindset? In interpretation, it is mindset. So today, when you have the mindset of Christ, you will have the attitude of prayer. You'll have an attitude of honoring God. You will have an attitude where your assignment is more important than all things. You're able to tell your own disciple, get you behind me, Satan. And you don't care whether they get offended. He was not addressing Peter. He was addressing the devil behind him. So you should be able to separate yours and what is in yours that shouldn't be there. You must be able to deliver your own people. How together? The Bible says that uh, while Jesus spoke, people's hearts were burning. I'll repeat, I hope your heart is burning. Especially if you've known the Bible differently. It's, it's in Philippians 2.5 where it says that, let the mind which was in Christ also be in you. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ. And the word mind is a mentality. Praise God. I shared with you Luke 10, 17 to 20, where the, the disciples went and cast out devils, and, uh, and they came very happy. And Jesus told them, you should not rejoice because you, the devils are subject to you. Rejoice because your name is written in the book of life. So all these mani natural manifestations, we have, we have all seen stories of men of God, great men of God who ended badly, right? One ended in a, in a drunken stupor, A.A. A. Allen. But we keep using these names. They did their work. But how come a great man of God like that, who performed such miracles, he died because of alcohol? Okay, let's use the Bible. How come Elijah died sick? And yet he could resurrect dead people, right? So we're saying the presence of God. But even when this sick man died, his dead bones could resurrect a dead person. His bones still carried the presence but he was not able to save himself. So today there is the gift in you and there is a gift in another. Just like with Joseph, the angel of God came and ministered to him. But he ministered to the gift in him. So he also exercised his gift to save the child and fulfill scripture. So today, you're listening to me does not in any way mean that you're not gifted. But your gift needs the help of an external gift. Tomorrow, do not say, Papa, no, for me, submission, I'm down here. No, I may need you. And you should be able to stand up and also minister to me. Yes, in humility, fine. Remember Akila and uh, who? Priscilla and Akila, is it? Priscilla and Akila. They found Apollos. Apollos is as big as Paul. But he was preaching the, the baptism of, of John the Baptist. Then after the ministration, they pulled him aside and told him about this other baptism. And once he learned, he now taught the other baptism. But they could have said, ha, Apollos, you know, we are not your size for you, you from state house. No. Even if I'm the one, even if I first met you and I delivered a demon from you, God, as long as you remain in God's presence, he's able to use you to minister to anyone. Amen. Praise the living God. Yes, it is scary. There's a man of God up to today I've never delivered his message. They gave me the message when I just began seeing like this. But I said, how do I go and tell this man? Today I can tell him, but I feel it is now too late. But never know. If God gives me courage, I will take. Because the man looks at me as his son. He's done, he knows me when we used to take porridge. Now you, 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 even you, you're trying to tell me. It's a big name in this country. I'll not tell you. Praise the living God. Give me Romans 1.16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and then to the Greek. 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, this is an atmosphere. This is a doctrine. The power of God, the gospel is not scriptures. The gospel is the power of God. 
Are together. The gospel is the power of God. That's why we have issues with theologians. We argue about these things. And there's nothing, with, nothing wrong with being a theologian. Fortunately, I can now say I'm one. I'm also a theologian. But I'm, a problem, I'm, I'm one that gives them problems. The gospel of God, even righteousness, a man who God has called righteous is righteous, even if you think he is not by your natural standards. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. For those that believe. Verse 17 says, For therein is righteous, the righteousness of God revealed. So even righteousness is revealed. You cannot claim that because I caught you, I caught you, okay, Friday plot, I saw you, does not mean that that person is unrighteous. If God has called them righteous, they are righteous. If God has said they are unrighteous, then they are unrighteous. But the moment you start addressing people as righteous and unrighteous, then it means you are you're in the wrong atmosphere. Praise God. Give me Romans, 1 Corinthians 1.18. I'm highlighting power. And all power is of the Spirit. For the preaching of the cross is to them that are perishing, or that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. But then again I say, if you go to a place and it is power, 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 only power, then you have also have a problem. The word of God brings a balance. And that word is fulfilled in the power of God. Is that clear? If you have scriptures from Genesis to Revelation and there is no power, you have a problem. And if you have only power, go to a witch doctor, he has power, but he has no scripture. So the two must have a balance. Praise the living God. 1 Corinthians 2, 4 to 8. Here what we're talking about is lost understanding. We're trying to correct one or two things. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Five, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So your faith is in what? In the scriptures? Your faith is established in the power of God. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect? The men that believe they're perfect, God is saying this is total foolishness. Yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that came to nothing. Seven. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Uh, I shared this thing. There is the mystery, then there is the secret in the mystery. The all those are levels. You can have general mystery and everybody worships you, but you will meet a man who can give you a mystery and you even fear. Because for it it's hidden, it's for a select few. But then who said it is? If you're in the presence of God, nothing should be hidden from you. Verse 8, which none of the princes of this world know, for had they known it, they would have not crucified the Lord Jesus, the Lord of glory. So there are people you meet and if you really had understanding, you'd not condemn them. You'd not fight them. You'd not judge them. The Bible says what? Who are you to judge another man's servant? God knows when he falls and when he lifts him up. Praise God. That's why I tell you, fight no man. Simply keep your assignment. Praise the living God. And religious people have a form of godliness. They walk in slow motion. People who have the wrong doc doctrine, they seem nice. It seems they have systems and it's beautiful. For you, Balokole, they say you guys are a bit unruly. You have no order. But in the spirit of God, you have order. Well, I also acknowledge that we have no order. You find people from this church hate the ones of this church. 
Our pastor has more power than yours. Now your pastor goes to the lake. Our pastor for him, he came from heaven. All together. So that is the disorderliness we have. Just like the disciples when they were telling Jesus, send fire to kill those guys because they are using your name as if, as if. All together. The Bible says that there's no one who can happily cast Jesus when they're using his name. You cannot even cast Jesus by mistake when you're using his name. Praise God. That scripture is 2 Timothy 3, 5 to 8. I don't think I'm going to read it. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, for such, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sin, lay with their diverse lusts, ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses. These are the, the wizards in, the, in Exodus. These names were not revealed, but now they're revealed. And Paul could only know those names by revelation knowledge or by the Spirit of God, by being in that atmosphere. We should most, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. How religion began, they were trying to bring order. Now this is church history. They're trying to bring order in, into the body of Christ because people kept, kept growing in phases. There's a dispensation of this, the ones who believe in baptism. Another dispensation, the ones who believe in tongues. Another, and the ones who believe in the prophetic. And all those guys were divided against each other. That, are ah, you guys, your doctrine is wrong, you're wrong, 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 wrong. And uh, that's where the so-called Protestants started from. But as for the Catholic, Roman Catholic, because the word Catholic, there's nothing wrong with me calling you a Catholic. Catholic simply means universal church. But the Roman Catholics established a system where it was a political, like it was like noob. And they wanted to rule the whole world. Today, are, don't, are they not in the whole world? They are easily the richest economy, but you don't know it. Just because they walk in slow motion, they sp sprinkle water. Those guys have money. Everywhere, their strategies, everywhere they, they put a school, they put a church. And from childhood, you grow. They provide your education. Will you betray those people? And that's Barokori. We are fire, 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 fire. Where is your school? <laughs> Praise the living God. But if one of you is wise, ask God to give you grace to at least build a school so that you indoctrinate the right doctrine to the children that of the latter generation. But for us, we land on these things. Well, we land on them like Job. The secrets of God were in my tabernacle. So the way we meet God is because of his presence. But otherwise, you can actually teach God. Only to a certain level. And then he reveals himself. Another man that was so wicked was Paul. Because of doctrine. He had a doctrine. He was defending the cause of God by killing Christians. And then God, God flipped him and revealed himself to Paul. Those things could not have been taught in class. He simply revealed that presence we're talking about. The lost understanding was given to him. And he became a new person. And guess who fought him? The very disciples of Christ were like, but this guy, no. We have heard about him. And we are saying that a man who God has called righteous is righteous. Paul, Paul was made righteous by God. So today... If you know somebody who is from the other world, then they turn and it's God. And you can discern that it's God who has turned them. Please receive them. Remember Jesus and John the Baptist? John the Baptist did not eat with people. He was eating in the mountains. And they accused him of not wanting to be with people. When Jesus came, he ate with prostitutes, with, with what? You name all the wrong people. And they still accused him. So you're not safe either way. Men shall be men. Religious men shall be religious men. They're unreasonable. They want you to do things their, their way. I have many who have come here and advised me on how to, on how to run TMS. I rem <laughs> My God. There is a lady. May it be well with her. 
was still at Namboli. She came to me. She's, a, I think she runs a magazine or something. And it's with swag. She was tall and I'm like, okay. Because now, Uncle B, we're going to do this. And then, 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 we need photos. What, 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 what? Then I said, okay, let me pray for you. Thank you so much. Whoa. <laughs> In the demon manifest. All together. She had beautiful ideas. But she was oppressed of the devil. After casting out the devil, she never came back. I don't know why. Maybe she got ashamed. I don't know. But when the devil leaves, you shouldn't be embarrassed. Yeah? That's what, in church here, if I cast out a devil from you, fortunately, you will not know what has happened. And when you ask me what happened, I say, yeah, that was the Holy Spirit. I will not tell you. Because I learned long ago, and some of you keep asking me that, Uncle B, why was I screaming? I tell you it was a demon. <laughs> it's like, wow, it cannot be a demon. <laughs> I only joke with those who I'm confident are not going to be distraught. But whether it was a demon or not, it's not important. It's not there. People are demon conscious. Why does it have to be a demon when someone falls? If, if it was about, if demons were about falling, I, I think Hajara would be the most possessed. All together. So that's a simple example that being under the influence of the Holy Ghost does not have to be misunderstood. Then there are those who don't fall at all. You feel nothing. You're solid. And be like, but for me, what is the problem with me? There's no problem with you. God is just chosen not to manifest the same way as in other people. Not together. Stop looking for natural occurrences. You will find religion in those ones. I remember someone, every service, Papa touch here. I got tired of touching here. Then I just chased the person. Then the papa, nowadays you don't like me. I'm like, yes, no, I don't like you. Until they got the message. Because people might make it a doctrine that until papa touches here, it has not worked. All together. You remember the carpet? People used to fear the carpet. Then I said, okay, let's get rid of that carpet and see if the power will go. But you call Hajara here now. You'll see that even this carpet has power, right? Is it the carpet really? We have God here. Today she's done no minister to us, right? She ministered all her power until it hit her. <laughs> Praise the living God. Now, some of you, you don't have the privilege to be hit by the Holy Ghost like that. But ask her, possibly even at home when she prays, I'm sure you get slain. Where is Hajar? Hey, she has come back. Doesn't it happen to you at home as well? It happens. Amen. Praise God. If you had seen me those days, they used to call me the falling prophet. And someone used to, someone once told me that you, Uncle B, you, they, because we grew up in the flats together, so they were casual with me. I was going to say cash, but you understand me. <laughs> like you uncle B have very many demons every service every service you're falling flying I turned I said what did you say I said you're not going to cross 30 meters she said wow my friend whatever brought her back here even me I don't know from that day she started calling me papa I said I'm not your papa your papa is there like as for me you're my papa and she stopped being but I told her now I don't have a friend because you're taking the thing too seriously. You're the one who started joking. Now, when things become serious, one thing is, once someone has an anointing, honor the anointing, but you don't have to stop being their friend. Who will be their friend? Now, like me, I live a very lonely life because I have no friends. People are, pa, 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 pa. my friend, I'm a human being. <laughs> Praise the living God. Of false prophets, false prophet is one who has the false doctrine and false doctrine is not necessarily outside scripture altogether you can have a scripture that is twisted and that's where we're having trouble it's mostly false prophets nobody talks of false teachers nobody talks of false apostles but they're also there they are no false evangelists because the devil is not going to try to evangelize praise the living god 
Are there false pastors? I don't, I don't know. A pastor takes care of sheep. If they're there, you let me know. These pastors tell you, if you leave my church, I will curse you. That's a false pastor. How many have been threatened like that? Don't fear. Your pastor will not send fire. I will say back to sender. There are some of you come to me and the first time we encounter each other, you're scared that your pastor is going to curse you. They have threatened you and all that. I'm Uncle B. We'll, send five, we'll scatter that church, but then against the church of Christ. Now together. So don't fight ministers. Don't fight Christians. Just leave them alone. One day they will get understanding. Pray for them to have understanding. Amen? Now, these, they make predictions. In other words, they, they are prophetic, right? And they're accurate. These, they do miraculous signs. They claim to be Christ. Have I told you I'm Jesus, I'm God, right? <laughs> Have you heard me say that? <laughs> yes, I am Jesus because he lives in me. I am God because he lives in me. But I'm not the Holy Spirit. But I cannot claim to be Jesus, the Son of God, the one who died and rose again. No. There's none like that. Because you and Jesus have become one. The Spirit of God and your spirit have also become one. And God lives in you. That's why you can lay claim. But you cannot say you are God. You cannot say you are Jesus himself. You cannot even... This little one is going to fall. Some movies, we see them beforehand. So you act quickly. <laughs> and then there are those who deny the identity of Christ. How do you deny the identity of Christ? Through doctrine. It's not that you're going to say, ah, no, Jesus, no. No, you, you may talk about Jesus, but it is in a twisted way. How? We are going to share a few things. One thing, a false minister will not do is they will not cast out devils because the devil cannot cast out a devil it's in the bible give me mark 9 39 i read and john answering him saying master we saw one casting out devils in devils in your name and he follows us not we stopped him because he follows us not verse 39 okay 38 to 39 but Jesus said forbid him not for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me for he he that is not against us he is on our part so this is a sign but the scripture that I show I, I share is uh, before you rob a, a strong man you must first bind him so a devil cannot bind the devil it's only the power of God that can bind them so keep it that way. But if you have greater knowledge, come and we share. Give me Luke 4 15. We're going to read this up to the end. How much time do I have? Give me Luke 4 15. We're going to read up to 21. This is Jesus, and he taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogues on the sabbath day and stood up to read and there was and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it is written so those of you who are reading scripture and thinking you're finding jesus even jesus is reading scripture I think it's now making sense, right? If you think knowing all scripture means you found Jesus, no, even Jesus is reading scripture. But you must read the scripture all the same. Did you take me faster than, I sh than you should? We okay there? And the spirit, okay, this, this is where he read. The spirit of the Lord, this is from Isaiah, I believe 60 or 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, those that desire him. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance. So deliverance is preached. 
How many of you, when the word of God is being taught, sometimes you, you just feel, you breathe out, you just feel relief? Altogether. Deliverance is new knowledge coming to you. There's also the deliverance of out. That is casting out devils. So the moment, like the moment you got saved, you got saved because you had been delivered. New information came to you. So deliverance is actually preached to the captives. Everyone who is not delivered is a captive. And captive of what? Of a false doctrine. And recovering of sight of the blind. Not physical blindness, spiritual blindness. To set at liberty them that are bruised. 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year is taught to be the day of rest, the Sabbath. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of them all that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. They were looking at him. 21. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. You remember what we shared earlier on? That the scriptures must be fulfilled. If you just recite scriptures and there's no fulfillment, there's no life, the spirit of the scripture, then you have a problem. Altogether. The scripture, if the Bible says you are rich, don't be a miracle who is just saying, uh, let the weak say I am strong, let the poor say I am rich. It must manifest. If we tell you Jesus is a healer, you don't walk around sick and saying Jesus is my healer. You must challenge him to prove his healing. At least that is what I do. I told you about COVID. I had COVID, I felt I was going to die. I simply said, Father God, there is no way I can die <laughs> because I still have work to do. Was I scared? Yes. Because every day you hear these people are going, like, but hey, I'm Uncle B, but man, today Uncle B is not working. Not together. Yes, you can fear, but fear in faith. This is, I'm, I'm being real, right? I would love to deceive you and tell you that for me, Uncle B, I just did like this. Whoa, I was going. I even used to fear to sleep. It got worse when the doctor who was treating me started crying. I'm like, now this is this, the level of if you survive this level, then you're okay. I'm like, whoa, I could, I could not take five steps without struggling for breath. Or oh, the word is gasping for breath. It was bad. But I would preach to people on WhatsApp and they would heal. COVID. So I'm like, but God, this contradiction doesn't make sense. But I'm still here. That's no God gave me another chance. <laughs> Praise God. Proverbs 11, 9, part B. This is to highlight on deliverance. Those of you who go to, let me not say the place, but there's a place where people go for deliverance. Okay, Mutundwe. Pastor Tom, right? He's a good man. He's a good man. But you could be indoctrinated that deliverance is a certain way only. Deliverance is the word manifest in you. And he, he, hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Knowledge of the scriptures. However, it is knowledge of Jesus. Praise God. How many, we all know the Lord's Prayer, right? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Is there repentance there before the bread? Has anyone repented before the bread has come? So usually God provides, he supplies everything that you need then out of gratitude, you start to turn away from things that are wrong. Is that true? But usually, Christians, we pray this prayer, repent. What is the word? It's in Luganda, right? There's nothing wrong with repentance, but repentance should come from gratitude. All together. Is that clear? 
using the pattern of the Lord's Prayer. Remember, that is not a prayer. It's just a pattern. He's telling you, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us. Forgiveness comes after repentance, right? But bread comes before repentance. How are you going to appreciate me if I have not done good? How will you appreciate God if you, you're always crying, God, me, I'm a sinner, I'm this, hey, from my father, from John the Baptist, our family, God, all together. Come to the throne of grace boldly. Come with boldness and take mercy by force. That's what the Bible says. Come and take it by force. The Father God, as for me, yes, it is true yesterday I did this, but today, me, I'm your child. I'm not leaving you. You remember the lady of the blood condition? What repentance did she do? She just touched. And is who touched me? And she was healed. But I, as a minister, I can choose to put you in bondage and tell you, until you meet me, you, <laughs> you've heard of those things. Some churches that until you meet me. Fine, there is when you warrant a meeting, but let your heart have liberty. Otherwise, you will think that the reason you're struggling is because uh, maybe there's something somebody did. You start looking for where to get deliverance from. And we're saying, if you want to be delivered, find Jesus. Not even the scriptures. Find Jesus. After you find Jesus, he will teach you the scriptures. Did he first teach the disciples before he met them or he first met them and taught them? Only thing is we're stubborn. We refuse deliverance. Like Moses, we have met God in his presence. Then immediately we are disobeying him. Sometimes it's ignorance. Moses was ignorant of the law. Was it even a law? The covenant, not the law. He was ignorant of the covenant of circumcision because he grew up in a strange land and was saying, come out of that strange land. We always like to say, the Pharaoh you saw yesterday, the Egyptian you saw yesterday, you shall see him no more. So come out of that doctrine. Praise the living God. So do not add works into the word of God. And this is to help us. Proverbs 24, 16. A just man falls seven times. The good news says, or NIV says, a righteous man falls seven times. Right? And, uh, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. The just man falls seven times and rises up again. So, do you rise up before you are just? Before you're righteous? In the sight of God, you're first righteous. And when you fall, you still rise up. Why? Because you're still righteous. How many of us believe that when we fall, we are not righteous? Okay, how many have felt that? Be honest. Have you ever felt unrighteous like you're far from God? It's because you've stumbled, right? Or because you don't know the word. Or you don't know what he has pronounced about righteousness. But God is saying, you are first righteous. Whoever God has called righteous is righteous. When you fall, you, yes, you've fallen, but you're still righteous. Lost understanding. Keep that in your mind. That yes, I did wrong. But Father God, I'm sorry. But me and you, we are still tight, right? Speak to God. Don't even try to pretend with him that you, thou didest, me, God, Father. Uh, no. Tell him direct God. In me, I'm going here, but I know I'm going to even fail. If you can stop me, stop me. You think God will stop you? No. God, you're a free moral agent. God is never going to put an angel like a donkey Somebody told me that thing. Was it yesterday? There's something they're pursuing. They've gone to three men of God and they've all given the same answer. You pray. They're ignoring it. Then the, the, her spiritual father tells her, you go and pray. So she's disappointed and now comes to Uncle B, the suffering prophet. And tells me that where things have reached, I'm going to ask God to what? To, to put a donkey to stop this thing. And what did she tell me? She said that even when I came to TMS without directly talking to you, you said I also should pray. But I know I prayed over her. And that is where, for, for me, the problem is not 
the three men of God and the spiritual father. The problem is you who is looking for everybody. But then again, if this is not working here, it is okay to move and get an answer, right? But if you find sausages in your uncle's home, you don't shift. <laughs> Come back home and suffer with your vegetables. But then again, what does the Bible say? Daniel had vegetables for 10 days and he was better than the rest, right? We're simply saying, stick to the word. Having a manifestation, manifested power from another source is still okay. But let it not become a religious act that you start looking for here and there. Be grounded, learn the word to a point that you become the word. Then instead of looking for people, they will look for you. Praise God. I've had the privilege to hear some of you minister. And when you minister, I even fear. I'm like, what I mean by fear is, guys are very strong on the word. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm the one leading these guys. Which means I cannot present poison. I have to come with real stuff. But now, it's the same Bible, right? So the only advantage I have is once I'm ministering to you, I'm under the influence of God. But otherwise, there is no difference between you and I if you have chosen to listen to the Bible or read the Bible. Amen? I listen to someone dissect the Bible and I'm like, yo, Father God, <laughs> do not demote me. <laughs> I've, been, I've been joking. Amen? Praise God. We know the story of the prodigal son. Highlighting righteousness, right? The prodigal son was perfect in his home. Then he took what is his. He asked for his inheritance. He went away, squandered it. Then he started to become a worker. Then he ate with pigs. Then he remembered that in my father's house, even the slaves are better. When he came back, they did not remind him of how he failed. They simply embraced him. But guess what? Rel the religious brother said, Father, you have not even given me a goat. He wants meat to pr as proof of love. But until you have staggered and fallen and gotten up, you will not really test if you're truly righteous. Righteousness sometimes is a choice. Forgive me, it is not biblical when I say choice. Righteousness is a, is a nature from God. But I like to sometimes say that sometimes it's a choice to be righteous. How? Even when you've done wrong, you tell yourself, no, this is not me. You go back to the right path. Is it clear when I say it that way? Righteousness is a nature from God, but sometimes it is a choice. So, choose to be righteous. Even when your prodigal returned to your father's courts. Amen? Thereby, rendering fasting and prayer and this prayer altar useless. If your mind, let this mind which was in Christ also be in you. Once your mind is set, you have a mind, your mind made up on Christ, then you may never have to fast. Please don't quote me. You may never have to pray. Please don't quote me. Prayer is important. Fasting is important. But I'm saying, there are those vain prayers that we pray. Father, forgive me. Father God, de -de 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 -de. You, you beat yourself and it's a waste of time. When you're fasting, it should be with joy. You should call your neighbor that, hey, how is it going today? Man, today is tight. I feel like eating. Will Papa see me? Oh, Papa will see you. People, Papa is not God. Amen? I'm, I'm sharing testimonies from people. They, they fast because they're fearing that I will see. I be at home, even me, I be going through the same hassle. I'm also like, uh, but if I eat, these guys are not here. But then, I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for the church. For me, it is an assignment. Praise God. So it is not easy. But uh, it is joyful at the end. Praise God. Give me John 5.39. Now, this is what we had shared about earlier on. Five thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. These are the words of Jesus. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are 
they which testify of me. The scriptures simply testify of Jesus. They testify of Jesus. The scriptures do not have eternal life. Jesus has eternal life. So, I say this, I repeat, but I ratify with the example of you can, even Satan can quote scriptures. Even people who have no understanding of the scriptures can quote scriptures. So, as you read the Bible, ask God to reveal them to you. He convicts you and he directs you. He inspires you, he illuminates you while you read the scriptures. 39, did I say 39 up to where? Up to 47, okay. Give me 30, give me 40. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. If you're searching the scriptures to thinking they have life, you will not go to Jesus. This is the Bible, not me. But if you search the scriptures, finding Jesus. Remember I've said, as you read the Bible, starting from Genesis, always look for Jesus. You've heard me say that many times, right? Always look for Jesus. He says, I receive not honor from men, 42. But I know you that you have not the love of God in you. If you're searching scriptures, Jesus knows whether you love God or not. So he's not really impressed. Sleeping with the Bible does not make revelation come to you. But I know, okay, 43. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, ye shall receive him. 44. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from God only? 45. For had ye believed, 45, do not drink, or rather do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one, one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. This is what I was looking for. When he says even Moses, he means the law. Like if you're not in the presence of God, then you're in the presence of the law. And the law is good doctrine when it is reproving you, guiding you, teaching you, inspiring you. But the law usually comes to kill. That's why Moses, once he walked away from, from the burning bush area, the holy place, the next chapter says God wanted to kill him because he had, he had not fulfilled the covenant of circumcision on his children, not even on himself. But his wife was wise enough because she was groomed as an Israelite. She was groomed well and she did pick a stone and, and circumcise the boys. So today we are saying that the very scripture that you use can actually destroy you. A religious man can quote you scriptures and destroy you and teach you the wrong thing. A false teacher for me is worse than a false prophet. Praise God. Praise God. So you trust in the law. Give me 46. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. So we sat the scriptures and believed the law. It's, it's stringent rules, but never saw Jesus in the law. And because we never saw Jesus, we'll never find, we'll never understand what Moses was writing about. Even Moses was writing about Christ. But because we're using a different eye, a different lens, we'll never be able to see Jesus. And uh, we can't believe the Christ now. That's why the Pharisees or the rulers of the synagogues, the Sadducees, they were addressing Jesus, talking to him, arguing with him, and they could not see him. There's one particular that was shared in intercession where the, the lead of the synagogue told Jesus, you cannot heal on the Sabbath. The woman of 18 years who had crippled, you cannot heal on the Sabbath. And uh, you find that you're telling the Sabbath that you cannot heal on the Sabbath because Jesus is the Sabbath. Praise God. 47. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Praise God. I think the first scripture we shared was, uh, I mean, you hear my, you cannot hear my speech because you don't hear my words, something like that. So today, 
the Bible is telling you that you can read the Bible and not understand the Bible. If you're reading the Bible, read to find the Christ. That is when it will work for you. Praise God. Praise the living God. I shared the scripture earlier on without giving you the citation. Romans 14, 4. It reads, Who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Yea, he shall be holding up or held up, for God is able to make him stand. So if God is speaking this about you, it simply means your righteousness remains. Your righteousness remains. Praise God. And then the arguments about the fivefold ministry. What is the purpose of the fivefold ministry? To edify the church, right? I'll read it from where? From verse. Okay, edifying the body of Christ for the perfecting of the saints. Now, this scripture, from what I've learned, is uh, that perfecting of the saints. The church was still young then. But as of today, you're supposed to be already perfect. That is just for understanding. We're talking about lost understanding. You, you're an apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, or one that sacrifices a priest. It is not for yourself. It is for perfecting the saints, right? So simply meaning that the people you minister to are not they present as not perfect because they have been in the wrong atmosphere. But you who has this atmosphere generated to them for their perfection. And it's not the scriptures you're going to quote to them. It is that presence that is going to reveal God to them, just like Job, where he says, the secrets of God were in my tabernacle. By the time of Job, there was no Bible. Praise God. Praise God. Some things I've already shared that I have here, I'm not going to share again. I'm going to read one last scripture. Acts 26 from verse 15 to verse, I think, 18. Just to remind us, today's teaching was nothing new. Just to remind us that there is a doctrine of devils and it is not from really a devil. It's from human beings who have chosen to be religious. And such a doctrine cannot be cast out. You simply have to move away from that atmosphere into a new atmosphere. For example, in your families, we have cultures, right? We have cultures, and then some of... I was born a Protestant. I was born Anglican. I was born a Catholic. You are never born anything. You are just born. If I was born today in uh, maybe Botswana, I would be speaking their language, and yet my parents are from Uganda. So your atmosphere matters. And uh, this is to some of you, Especially you guys in the corporate world who like, what do you call it? I, I don't know what the word is, but there's a word. As you just like being around each other, encouraging each other in nonsense. Get rid of some of your friends. It may be painful to get rid of them, but in one, two, three years, you'll be far better than them. Because every time you're speaking, you're simply comparing notes. Benchmarking, right? I'm trying to prove to you that, you know, by the way, I'm now roofing. Eh? Eh? I'm, I'm trying to communicate to you that, man, let me use the language you understand. I'm better than you. And that person will continue to feel better than you and make you feel less than them because of natural things. And yet, if you focus on your God, you'll be shocked when God wants to talk to you. He'll send a prophet or he'll send an idea. God can give you an idea to start grinding orange leaves. And that's the cure maybe for HIV. And you become rich and you go back and ask these people who had arrived. You guys, the journey is still long. Are we together? Some of your friends who seem to be better than you, it is simply because you've surrounded your mind around them. There's no one better than you. If God has chosen to touch you, you will be shocked. And many times when you're going through the trial period, the test, you will surely look like for you God has forsaken you. But you know your God, right? You know your God. Have I ever felt that way? Yes, I have. Have I felt like I have no direction? Yes, I have. Have I ever lost 
something. Yes, I have. I've lost many things, very many things. I did not know God was simply removing things from me to try and establish me. And right now, if some of you have argued with me when I tell you that I'm a pastor, so but yeah, you're a prophet. I'm the one who knows who I am. I want to be a prophet. Yes, I do. Why do I say that? The kind of prophetic God has showed me that I call prophetic. We have not even, we have not tested 1%. So I'm like, God, when? Even I am waiting. Maybe I'm not ready. I don't know. Altogether, I pray to God, teach me to teach. You know, I don't preach, right? I don't come and say, hey, twala, fire. I don't know those things. I come and read you the Bible. That's all, that's all I do. At some point, I feel like, God, did you really call me to do this stuff? Because I just wanted to come and abuse you, like Pastor Jingo, and we be happy, and we go. I want to be entertaining, but that's not what God called me to do. All together. What we're calling the prophetic here is word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is a small ingredient. Okay, well, a core ingredient in the prophetic. If you meet what we call a real prophet, you will know that Uncle B is a buffet. All together. Yes, I am a prophet. Fine. I am a prophet. But what God has shown me, I feel we have not even begun. All together. So my aspirations are very big. So when I meet a pastor right now, or a man of God, who everybody is worshipping, I'm not moved. Because I know, I have my identity inside of me, I know where God has shown me, and I have to simply be patient and get there. But I can divert. Many have come to me, they've tried to call, what they call them, to entice me or impress upon me to have aff affiliations or what do you call them? Unity or like form a body or whatever of prophets and you'll be walking like prophets. I'm like, man, first leave me alone. Me, I'm a pastor. They're like, no, we have had you. And you know it feels good when other fellow servants of God say and acknowledge you. Maybe your CEO, other CEOs acknowledge you. These are words that they give you. They'll make you feel, yes. But do you know your identity? What is my purpose? Make disciples of men. If you guys were not able to prophesy or teach or heal or whatever it is that you do now in God, I would be a failure. Altogether. But I, could, I can create, you call them protocol, security. I can create them. What security do I need from you guys? I can box you, you'll run away. All together. It's not like I have anything you can steal. I'm, I'm Uncle B, simple like this. And in our simplicity, we can multiply. Remain simple. Impart unto another. Establish another. This is a challenge maybe to all of you. Show me your disciples. Jesus had disciples, right? And his disciples also had disciples. So show me your disciples. Don't come to church for yourself alone. Come to church for your family, for your friends, for any and everything that is, that is contained in God. Praise God. Imagine when I received this anointing, I kept it to myself. I'm going to give you an example. Here's a mic, thank God. Were you the way you are when you, before you met me? No. Have I ever told you pay? No. <laughs> but if I've told you, be honest. <laughs> no. Freely we received and freely we give. The challenge here is when, after you have received, you see maybe another servant of God and want to be like them, then you start pursuing different streams and it can become a problem. If you want a healing stream, I can start doing only healing for the next four weeks and you'll see that we can do healing. But then none of you is sick. If there's someone sick, we can pray for you. Even the Bible says if any among you sick, call for the elders, which means we'll find you at home. You want the prophetic? I think, who was there with me in the beginning where we only used to prophesy to a point we realized that prophecy alone is not helping anybody. 
I'm telling you about your slippers, your bed sheet. It, yesterday you did like this, the bed sheet got torn. Like, yes, man of God, it is true. Yeah. And I'm like, how does that improve your life? Out together. Then deliverance of fire, fire. In the name of Jesus, out. Even if there is no devil, you're going to manifest because the presence of God is there. Then they tell you, by that man of God has power because the, when he speaks, you shake. Even now we can speak and you shake. Does it mean you have a devil? No. What are we talking about here? We're talking about doctrines of devils. We're talking about lost understanding. Just because someone has been in God for years, how many of you got, how many of you got saved before 2007? I'm talking to children. <laughs> How many have been saved from before 2007? At least I have, oh, thank God. I have witnesses. Now me, I got saved in 2007. But I'm the one ministering to you. And after getting saved, I first handled salvation for like one year, two years. I was like, wow, stuff is boring. I went back to doing my own things altogether. It is 2015 when I came back to church. All that time I used not to go to church. I was playing football, playing rugby. I used not to drink, driving my brothers, the things of Kaunyamu. Because me, I'm not drinking. I'm driving them and all that. I started again in 2015. And I became a bit, I don't know if I became serious or God became serious with me. 2016, I started having problems with Christians. Because the way I understood the scriptures was different from the way they understood. You're not obedient. You're not this. You're not that. Everything went, everything bad happened. He's my witness. He's my witness. But what had I done? Nothing. Actually, these, these guys are the ones who brought me problems. Because I became their friend. And they're like, I think that is the guy who is disorganized. I've been your friend a short time. Now they are saying it is me who is influencing you. All together. But all that was a setup from God to establish me. The only prayer I could pray was this too shall pass. I've told you that before, right? I didn't bring out Ezekiel when this, the bones which are dead and all that speak to the winds and bones came together. No. I only would say every day this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And why would I say that? It's not because I knew the words, this, this too shall pass. Because I had sight. I saw the end of it. So I'm like, oh, it shall also pass. So let me wait it out. And I waited it out. Today we are here. The moment you commit to God, you want to be a prophet. <laughs> You have no idea what you're asking for. But for you, it is too late. You already have it in you now. Manifesting it or activating it, you will be tested. And yet my test was even simple. My job was to stand before a man of God who everybody fears and tell him, my friend, I'm an apostle also. Isn't that bad manners? Later on, I humbled myself and we are here. Hasn't God moved? As in God taught, and I'm saying today, the Bible is clear, but it's also not clear. The Bible is direct, but it's also indirect. Ask God freely, he said, if you ask him for wisdom, he will give it to you. You cannot copy Uncle B. You can find that your person who is more alive than me. So for you, when you preach, people are happy, people are laughing, people are hallelujah. In TMS, if you say hallelujah, we, ident we clearly know that you are visited. There's a guy, it happened in Namboli. I was preaching and the guy is, amen. He stands up, he jumps. We're like, everybody's like, but this guy, does he know where we are? Here, we are in the spirit. <laughs> now together. But now, when he came that way, it was well also, that is what he is used to. And it made him look so spiritual that for us, we had a problem. I met him again two weeks later. He said he wanted the one-on-one. -on -one. It was an Namboli. I spoke to him for 10 minutes. 
There used to be a restaurant at the gate that side, those who remember. The anointing hit this guy. We could not carry him. The anointing became heavy. It was not physical weight. They had to drive the car, reverse it, and we came and we carried him like a log into the car. I'm like, yo, what has happened to this guy? And from that day, I'm called man of God. <laughs> but was the anointing mine? It's God's grace, God's anointing. You know someone who is, we call it being fresh, very fresh with you, is very comfortable with you. That day is when he got to know that we are actually very different. So sometimes I go to churches and they sing, their choirs, they sing, you feel like uh, we are now in heaven. In TMS, somebody told me, but Uncle B, <laughs> me, I want choir. Oh, I'm going to another church. I said, you go to another church. If you, those who know me, those who, well, most of you don't know me well. Me, I tell you the way it is. You want to go to another, you're trying to threaten me. My friend, a man often, I fear nothing. <laughs> now together, I have nothing to fear. So I told them to go. They went. Didn't they come back? Said, I know that way there is no word. I'm like, but I thought they teach the Bible. Like, yeah, but it's different. It was not the word different. It was the atmosphere different. And we're saying, remain in the atmosphere of God. God has given us grace to generate his presence. And yet, because we're used to it, we can take it for granted. Me, I've never, there are very few ministers I've seen who pray and their, anoint, their own anointing hits them. But it happens here. And I'm like, even me, I want to experience that. I have not. Praise God. At the end of it all, we're saying, all lost understanding must be restored to us. And uh, many people suffer because of lost understanding. You walk religiously, you walk in culture, and God is saying, this, that is a doctrine of devils. I could continue this teaching in another way, but uh, maybe not. We talked about, what's his name? It's in Revelation, the seven churches. God was writing to the seven churches, telling them, I know your works, they are good. I know this, you're good. I know this, but I have a problem with you. You tolerate that woman, Jezebel, but it's not a woman. We tolerate a certain spirit. I know this, and you, you have experience in being alive, and yet you are dead. And if God is the one writing to you, and these are the big churches, the, 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 he was writing to pastors. So today, you can find the very vibrant churches that we all admire and find that actually God is not there. Who is an occasional visitor. And I'm saying today, renew your environment. Your environment is not TMS. Your environment is Jesus in your heart. Your environment remains Jesus in your heart. And nobody can help you with that but yourself. Like we said, a righteous man who falls is still righteous when he has fallen. But he must choose to pick himself up. No matter how many times you call Uncle B, you still must get up on your own. Praise the living God. Okay.